forum topics that's been uh, been out there right now. We, we've got a nice thread on, on drop back concepts in the end zone offense um, and, and how you merge the R4 uh, system and communication with end zone. Um, my experience with that uh, really relates back to a, a, a Glacier clinic uh, last winter. We, uh, you know, right before we purchased the system for, from end zone, um, we noticed that we, you know, we we'd have a chance to go to Atlantic City and, and hear an old for about eight hours worth of football. So we were real excited about that. Um, we purchased the system. Noel was speaking on a Saturday, Sunday, and, and that Friday we also had an opportunity to listen to Doug Maddox uh, go through his R4 presentation. So we spent about five hours with Coach Maddox. We bought his books. We bought his tapes. We, we studied up on that along with the end zone system. Uh, and as we we got into our drop back concepts uh, last off season in our playbook. We looked for ways where we could merge the two because uh, we loved the end zone offense and all the concepts there. But we were looking for ways to uh, to merge some of these R four things that we felt were were going to be beneficial to our quarterbacks, uh, beneficial to our coaching staff, and and really help us in terms of our execution and throwing the football. Uh, we had been a team that had a a West Coast style passing attack uh, before we got into end zone, so throwing the football was something we were really into. And uh, the combination of our West Coast background, the stuff we picked up from R4, and, and the end zone system uh, really came together for, for great success for us last season. Um, so we want to move on here, and I'm just going to give a little background on what what we see the, the R4 system at. Obviously, you know, Doug will give you a uh, you know, he can give you a five-hour clinic on this. Uh, I'm going to give you a, a five-minute on how we've kind of married into what we do and, and what we interpret the most important things from that uh, that system to be. Um, there are probably I know a lot of guys out there are are on four guys and have already incorporated into their passing game. So there may be some guys that have even a better background and, and are doing a better job with it than we are. But I certainly want to share with you how we feel it fits in. Um, for us, what is R four? Uh, Doug, quick question. Um, on the side of my screen, is that uh, go to webinar uh, up? Uh, no, we won't see that. That actually comes through as transparent on our side. But if you click that orange button, it'll reduce it into the side of your screen. Great, thank you. Yep. Okay, so what do we think of what is R four? Uh, R four is a communication system for the quarterbacks, the coach, and the wide receivers, uh, and there's a lot of of uh, communication that gets everybody on the same page. Um, simple words, simple concepts that will help uh, help you in communicating open and, and covered receivers with your quarterback. Um, so as well as being the communication system, again, it outlines what covered and uncovered means. Uh, we think it really helps to time up the quarterback drops um, with when routes are going to come open. And I think the whole timing aspect of R4 is very important, and we use it as a way to outline our quarterback progressions, as opposed to just saying, "Hey, first look, second look, third look," or you know, maybe as we used to do, peek at this route, then go here to here. Um, this gives us a a systematic approach to outlining our progressions. Uh, when we're talking about R four, these are the four words that that Maddox uses in in uh, in communicating it. Um, he's got rhythm routes and. Uh, what he considers a rhythm route is a route that comes open on the third step of the quarterback's drop if, if we're taking our drop back game out of the gun. Um, and really, this is an area that, that we're looking at off season, and that's our quarterback catching the snap uh, from shotgun, one, two, three, and when his back foot hits the ground, delivering the ball on rhythm. And I think there's a number of routes that that's very important uh, for. The second step in the progression is the read route. Uh, in many of our progressions, a read route is usually an intermediate route. So the quarterback will take his three-step drop. He'll be reading his rhythm route. And if it's not there, when the back foot hits the ground, he's going to hitch up and hit that read route. For us, examples of read routes are intermediate digs, shins, curls, those types of things. Um, as far as we know, um, we define the rush route as any hot read that you might have, especially in a five-man protection. Your rush route is going to be the hot route that you're looking to go to, or 
In our case, it could be the third read or check down in a progression. So our quarterbacks know it as two possible different things. A rush route could be a hot read or it could be a check down if my rhythm route is covered. I hitch up, look at my read route, that's covered. I hitch up one more time and get the ball to the rush route. Um, our check down against zone, or if I'm seeing a blitz, our rush route might be the route we go to right away as a hot situation. Uh, and then the last uh, thing we talk about in R4 is releasing, how the quarterback is going to look to escape from the pocket if he's gone through his progression or feels pressure, uh, what are his escape lanes and escape techniques. Uh, and along with that release, um, we incorporate our scramble drill into that. What do we do when the quarterback scrambles in one direction or, or scrambles in another? Those are um, important concepts I think you need to, uh, to have and be able to work on. So um, the first route we're going to talk about in reference to R4 and, and how we do it at Ramapo is our Daytona or four verticals. up on the screen here. All right, so we start by teaching Daytona out of a dual formation, two and two. All right, Daytona, we think, is uh, you know next to Chevron and Exxon, we, we would say it's the third route in our progression. We were out on the field. You know, this is the third one we're going to get to in the drop-back game. Um, it is our four vertical routes. So as far as what we're doing, the outside receivers, the Z and the X, they have what we call Ramapo High School a win route. They are going to try to win deep. Um, so it's a, a typical go route, you know, step on the corner's toes, give him an inside move, get him to turn, and try to beat him deep uh, down the sideline, leaving yourself four to five yards worth of sideline for the quarterback to throw the ball. If we get an off corner when we are running a win route, a guy that we can't eat up the space, um, we can't run by him. We tell our guys, when you get to about 10 yards, you need to make your decision. Are you going to get by this corner or not? All right? And we tell them, if you're even at 10, you're leaving. If you haven't gotten him out of his back pedal, if you haven't gotten to even by 10, then you're going to get your foot in the ground at 14 yards and run a comeback route back down the sideline uh, on the outside break. So that's our outside win route on Daytona. It's an outside choice route for our receivers. Our inside guys run what we call hash sits, okay? Our landmark is the hash. Uh, our main coaching point is to avoid any underneath defender, all right? We want to put a mover on that guy, stick him inside, go outside, make sure we avoid contact, get his hands off, but we don't want to get slowed down by any underneath defender trying to jam us. Once we've cleared the underneath defender, then we're running for our landmark, which is the hash, right? In the case of a one high safety look, the hashes are open, so we're going to take those deep. Now, one of the things we do at Ramapo is we ask our quarterback to always identify the safety structure. Noel calls it post safety, split safety. We often do refer to it as one high and, or two high or zero high. That's, that's our terminology here. So in the diagram that you see, this is, day, this is a one high safety look. Our quarterback progression is rhythm hash to the field or his best look if we're in the middle of the field. What we're telling that quarterback is to take a three-step drop. When his back foot hits the ground, he is going to have chosen one of those two inside hash routes, and he wants to throw that ball when his back foot hits the ground. And uh, here's what we think is real important. That enables him to get that ball off in that 20 yard, you know, 18 to 22 yard range that, that coaches often talk about. Excuse me, man. Uh, that's really the soft spot in the defense, all right? 18 to 22 yards with that hash route. So one, two, three, put your foot in the ground and throw the hash. Well, against a one high safety, generally either we get beat up and we don't get vertical. That's one of the reasons that could cause him not to throw that hash route, or the free safety plays your eyes hard. So now, quarterback takes his three-step drop, doesn't like it when his back foot hits the ground. Now he's going to hitch up, and he's going to go to a read hash. So now his read route is the other hash. Um, he's going to hitch up to that and look to throw that. If he likes it, again, we try to get it in there, 18 to 22 yards, 
a direct line on call. If that route is covered and he doesn't like that progression, then we go to the outside win route or the under based on what we think they're doing that week uh, and their coverage structure and, and their personnel. Uh, so for the quarterback in this situation, he may choose to go rhythm route number one, okay, his read route number two, and then he could come over to this win route number three on this side. And by this being a 14-yard route, we think that times up pretty well uh, as his rush route, a late route. Um, underneath, the other option he has is one to two to three. So where we differ maybe a little bit from the, the R4 guys, you know, is route truly a rush route? Is that ready um, when, when it's a hot situation? Well, if it's a vertical, it certainly is ready as a rush route, so we feel it. It fits that category. The under route, well, not necessarily a rush route because he's checking protection first. But again, some teams that drop those linebackers real deep trying to get under there, you know, that's easy pickings. Drop it to your tailback uh, for five yards and let them go run to the board. So at Ramapo, that's how we're going to read dual right Lion Daytona all right, versus a one high safety. Now, if we get a two high safety look, okay? Both of our outside receivers, we expect them to be able to win this deep uh, if it's cover two. So if the corners are up tight, as you would see in a base cover two look, we expect our outside guys to beat those corners deep. We tell them to press the corners leverage hard. All right, so I'm going to take a hard outside angle for that corner's outside leverage. If I can beat him outside, get his hands off and, and get vertical and then stack him up. If I'm an outside receiver and at corner, as I attack his outside leverage, really shuffles out and maintains it, I'm going to duck inside and then get back outside and try to stack him. So those are the two things that we tell him to do as far as avoiding that jam. All right? Always attack the corner's leverage, make him widen to defend that leverage, and duck back inside. Or we attack his leverage and we beat him to his leverage, get his hands off, and get vertical. So we've got our win routes on the outside there. Now, our inside route, we call it a hash sit. We're going to tell both of our hash guys, hey, you're running down that hash if it's empty or, you know, in, in our four terms, uncapped space. Um, Patrick Browning, I, I had a chance to listen to him uh, on some of the webinars. And Patrick uses a lot of the R4 terms. I'm sure he's you know, spent a lot of time with that. And, and we would consider this hash now capped because We've got the free safety or one of the safeties on one hash. We've got the other safety on the other hash. So the chance of our Y and F winning vertical isn't very good here. So we give them the same as our outside receivers. Avoid your jam. As you get to 10 yards, you're going to make a decision whether you can win the vertical space or you cannot win the vertical space. In this case, in, in cover two zone, they probably can't win it. He's going to put his foot in the ground at 14 and find a throwing lane to the quarterback. And that's important, finding a throwing lane to the quarterback. If it's two zone, generally our guys are going to come inside of that Sam linebacker uh, in that position, and, or Sam or Will linebacker. They cannot break this route off until they've cleared those linebackers. So they, they got to get vertical push past the linebacker, and then they will break in and find space. They were in a man situation where the outside linebackers were locked on in man. As we get vertical to, to 10 yards, we feel that guy running with us hard on the inside. We know we've got a safety on top. We may now stick it inside and break out. But the bottom line is we're giving these two inside guys the freedom to get open. Do not run to be covered by a safety. They have the freedom to get open uh, when they have a hash stick. So we don't use the traditional bender on Daytona, we give both guys the option to hash sit that thing. And the tailback has his check down. So from a quarterback perspective, how does this pan out? All right, his rhythm route all right, is his win on the outside now. All right, and again, we talk about uncapped space here. Um, this collision tube out here, or excuse me, cushion tube in R4 terms, okay, it, there's a big opening there, so we want to take advantage of that uncapped space. One, two, three, 
when his back foot hits the ground, we're looking to throw that ball 18 to 22 yards in the hole right there. All right, and generally now we're going to tell our guy, hey, we want to throw this thing into the boundary, make it the shortest ball possible for him. If that route is covered, so what happened? Well, a couple things could have happened. He could have gotten killed by the corner eye and got collided and, and not and gotten to the open space, or possibly, you know, that safety was playing too close. Safety was splitting it halfway. Um, so now we're going to look inside. It's possible if that safety got off the hash and got over the top right away, that this F might continue to take his his hash, and then we're going to throw the ball inside. If that safety was splitting the difference, now our hash might sit down, and the quarterback is going to hitch up. His read route is the hash sit route right here, finding an open window. So rhythm win, read hash sit, and then we always give them the option week to week and game plan how we do it. We'll either tell them to come across to the other hash sit. Uh, in this case, his eyes were over here on the left probably the whole time. His eyes were on the wind. His eyes were on this hash. We probably got that Mike linebacker to work in this direction, so he probably has a nice open window here all right, to throw that hash sit. Or we may tell them now the mic usually gets deep in the hole here this week. We may want to come down and hit the under route, uh, tailback route, as our third look or our reach route. So that's how we're going to coach the Daytona route out of dual versus the two high safeties. All right, hey, Coach. And then the third thing. Okay, I'm go sorry, ahead. Doug. No, we got questions, so I was, I was hoping to take that as a transition. Okay, let's do it. So two things. We're actually getting a lot of feedback on your mic. Um, which could be just because of some open windows. So I hate to, to do clean up here in the middle, but maybe if you've got some open windows in the bottom bar, you could close a couple of things down that might use the web, maybe your email or something like that. I'm sorry about that. I have a ton of open windows. So <laughs> That's probably what it is. It's probably just eating your bandwidth. Playmaker probably isn't right at it, but Chrome will. And what's the other I'm thing? Chrome right now. Well, no, no, you're not on Chrome. You can actually, you can actually close Chrome. Oh, you're using it for Huddle. Okay. I'm using it for Huddle. If you could close your inbox and things like that, though. Oh, I got you. Yeah, that's that'll that'll eat up some bandwidth on you. All right. How about Citrix, that? that Citrix window you can close too. That'll eat some bandwidth too. It's not doing anything right now. It's just hanging out there. Okay. Okay. And then I will. Um, those guys are just standard programs. It look like so. I'll I'll jump. I'll ask a question while you're getting back to your slides. So. What are what are some examples why the quarterback chooses one scene over the other on pre-snap during pre-snap? So, well, if we're in the middle of the field, usually we tell him to look to the field hash first. That would be that would be the first look. So, if I'm talking inside seams, I would look to the field hash first. Second thing, if if we're right dead snap in the middle of the field, we would look to our better kid first because he's more likely not to get jammed. You know, he's the guy that can probably avoid that jam the best, so we would probably look to him first. And, um, you know, we used to teach, hey, look one way, come back the next type of thing, you know, try to try to play with the free safety. But, but really where we've gone to now is one, two, three, get that foot in the ground, and, and we're going to force this kid to make a play. And then now if you really feel he's coming over, well, now I think we've, we've really opened the backside hash up. So... For me, I want that quarterback looking early to where he wants to go, and if he has the space, zip the ball in. Hey, Coach, you there? I'm still there, yep. I was, okay, I just want to make sure. I thought I lost you. Yeah, yeah. So why do you prefer to not flash fake? Um, we will incorporate the flash fake. Um, we, we, we will run act protection. We'll run this with hustle protection as well. Um, one of the nice things is it is a little bit easier on the quarterback when you don't flash fake. The negative is your linebackers are going to get more depth. So um, we do both. Um, you know, in a pass down, we may not flash fake because we don't think it's going to do much for us. Uh, in a run down, you know, first and ten. Chances are we'll be in act protection or hustle protection when we run this. So we do do both. Um, it, then you've got to throw the ball with, without a drop right off the fake. That's what we found is 
you know, timing up the flash fake and, and the release uh, on act protection. You know, we're going to set, we're going to ride him, and then come right up and throw the ball from there. We're not going to add any depth to our drop. Okay. Do you ever have the back run flare to the boundary instead of under route? Um, in our base drop back, we wouldn't. Um, the time we would is if he's in hustle protection. Uh, hustle is our stretch fake. So if we brought him across in front of the quarterback, and, and this was real good to us in, in one ball game, now we would tell him, off the hustle, you're going to continue and run a swing. And now if, if you get a man, excuse me, if you get a man type coverage there, uh, that does a great job of drawing any linebackers out of the middle. So you know, bring them across and flare them when it's when it's our hustle play action. Okay. And then um, this question I don't understand. Hopefully two rhythms make a read. Yeah, that's an R four term. Okay. Because um, if you look at both of these hash routes um, or see whatever you want to call them, they're both rhythm routes. They're both routes that can be thrown on rhythm. Either one of those. So. When you have a, you know, in the R four terminology, when you have a, a situation where you have two possible rhythm routes, the second one you look out really becomes a, a read route. Uh, that's a, you know, that's an R four term. Okay. And the last question I have for the moment is: Will a um, will a short quarterback have problems with the middle hash sit ball? Our kid was five ten. Um, he didn't seem to have much of a problem. Because remember, at least we, we believe we're never throwing over defenders. We're always going to slide to try to throw between guys. Uh, we've made a living at our place with five foot ten quarterbacks, and um, and it, it's it's usually not a factor if they have good feet and they can slide to find space. And your hash sits. You know, we're coaching them to do the exact same thing. You've got to find. You know, you've got to be able to see the quarterback. You're looking to to find a, an open uh, window to the quarterback. Okay. So the last situation we always coach in any route is what we get versus zero high safety. Um, and, and basically, you know, if we get no safety defense and we've got Daytona called, we're going to pick our best matchup. So now we know we've got man, man to man all across the board. Um, they're going to probably blitz in six. You know, maybe they're maybe they're key blitzing and they're going to bring seven. Um, if the Mike who has the tailback when we block, they bring him. So our quarterback knows this is one, two, three. You know, pick the best matchup and, and let's win it. Uh, and that's all game plan stuff for us. So um, again, we, you know, this is whenever anybody talk to any defensive guys about spread football, they always seem to say, well, what are you going to do when we, you know, we're going to put seven in the box or we're going to put seven. So we always want to have answers for that, and we want to make sure we're we're practiced and well prepared. We don't see a lot of it because they they don't want to die quickly, but uh, but that always seems to be. Know somebody's answer to, to what we're doing. So now we take the same route. We love it out of trio. All right, for us, Y is three, F is two, Z is one. We've got the X back side, and our tailback now goes away from the Y. So now you've got trio run Daytona, and this is going to be our call more often than not when we're on the hash mark. Get our three guys to the field here. Uh, X and Z have their win routes, just like they would have uh, in dual. Uh, the F has his hash route, all right, and now we tell the Y this is what we call a far hash route. You're going to take your route to the far hash. You're going to try to clear the Mike linebacker, okay, and get across the face of the safety. So again, the quarterback wants to go to the field, all right, with this, all right, on his rhythm route. One, two, three, when the back foot hits the ground, we want to throw this ball in that you know, 18 to 22 yard window right here. That's where we want to deliver that football. And um, you know, it's amazing what happens as soon as the kid hitches up. It's amazing how much more time that takes and how much gets and, and it really turns into an over the top situation. And, and we're giving that free safety a much better chance to compete for the ball. If we throw it off that third step when our back foot hits and we zip it in there, um, we have some pretty good success. Uh, one of the things we emphasize with our quarterbacks is you know, we always want to kind of tuck your back knee inside of your foot. So when your third step hits, the knee should always be tucked in a little bit inside of where your foot plants so you can, you can push off 
into that route. Um, if you go on the site and you watch some of the quarterback drills, the cliff drill that um, that Noel runs, where he has quarterbacks you know just kind of jogging away from each other, and he, he gives a call, and the quarterback quickly just plants his foot and throws. That's a, another good drill for helping develop that skill in your quarterback. That one, two, three, when the back foot hits, get the ball off on rhythm. So what can stop that hash route for the most part? We feel it's either a tremendous disruption in the route or collision by the SAM or this free safety getting over the top. In either case, our quarterback's eyes are here to begin with. Okay, If he doesn't like it, then he's going to come back to his far hash or, or boundary route right here. And uh, that's off his hitch up. So one, two, three, and then we hitch it up, and we're going to hit this one right here across the face of the free safety. If he didn't like that, it's field hash, boundary hash to the boundary win route. All right, and again, from a timing perspective, my rhythm, I've, I've taken three steps, didn't like the field, I hitched up to throw to the near hash, and then I hitch up one more time and throw the win route, and, and that 14-yard out route should time up pretty well for your guys. If you've got great speed on the outside, you, you may you know, you may let them push it to 16. Um, the other thing we tell our guys, and again, based on game plan, based on our players and their players, is he can go hash, hash, and hit that tailback under, especially if the other team is dropping linebackers deep. He gets his two safety look. Okay, so now it's two higher split safety. Again, the technique for the outside guys hasn't changed. All right, that's a, a win route. You're going to beat that guy deep if you can. And against the cover two look, you should be able to, to beat that guy deep. Um, so what we'll tell our quarterback is one, two, three, throw the boundary win. That's the first thing we're looking for right there. Get him the ball on the boundary win route. If the corner beats him up and doesn't let him get a release or the safety gets off the hash, our next look is that far hash route. And so now we've told the Y, get over the top of the mic and break the route to the far hash. But why are we going to are we going to run to be covered? Okay, and this is basically what we tell them. Don't run to get covered. Where's the open space in the defense? The open space is this middle two right here. So take advantage of space. Um, take grass, as Noel would say. Um, get yourself down the middle into that open space. So now we've put a lot of stress on this boundary safety. Boundary win route, okay. Far hash route, which really takes the middle tube, if you're an R4 guy, and then we can go to the hash sit here uh, on this route. So this F, he's getting down that hash, all right. If their free safety is getting depth, we're going to break it off and find space. What might take away this this far hash route that's down the middle? Well, maybe they're running the mic. Maybe they're playing Tampa too. So they run the mic down the middle on him. So this hash sit route may come open inside the Sam's drop in this window right here. So it's boundary win. Okay, far hash wide down the middle. We can come to the hash sit. Or again, consistently we can come to the under at any point. If you get that Tampa two and the mic's out, you might have a great shot to drop the ball right down here to your tailback who's got a nice catch and run there. Uh, so we want to be boundary, far hash route, hash sit, or to our tailback on his short under. We like this one with act protection. All right, we can put the tailback here. For us, it would be act odd. So he would come through here, take his fake, and break. But we think that might hold any mic that's trying to run the hole on this particular route. OK. Um, let's see. We're good to go with that. Um, the other thing that we get sometimes against cover two uh, with a too high safety look in both situations is and I'm, I'm sure you guys see it, is, is cover four look, where now the corners are getting soft on us, okay? Uh, in cover four, we could have the corners soft. Um, in that case, this route may turn into an outside break. 
Now our quarterback, one, two, three on rhythm, um, he would kind of look at that and he would know, uh, I can't really throw that, that comeback route on rhythm. I expected against too high. I expect the boundary win to be there, but they're playing quarters, so that's going to kind of disappear from his radar. So still take a look at it, one, two, three, because we might be able to beat that guy, but if we can't beat him deep, we generally don't throw that one on rhythm into the boundary because it just takes too long to develop. He'd usually come off the boundary win on rhythm, and then he'd be looking at his far hash to his hash sit route. And again, a quarters coverage team, how are they going to handle that? They might be stealing with the backside safety. Some teams do that. So now that guy comes over, takes away that route, and again, then we're down into this hash sit. We, we think we're going to get some vertical in here, and now it almost becomes a high-low on the bike. He comes back, didn't like that because the, the wind wasn't there deep, came back here, and the safety stole it. All right, he took that away. Continue over to your hash sit. We'd like to throw that if we have an open window. If we didn't have an open window because the mic dropped, we dropped the ball down into the tailback on the race. So those are the two looks that we get out of too high safety. I probably should have showed you that in dual as well. Um, our quarterbacks stay with the same progression in too high, but we try to get them to know the difference between cover two team that's playing hard corner and a cover four team that's playing a soft corner look against us uh, and be able to, to differentiate between those two coverages and how they might affect the route. Uh, Last thing, if we go Daytona, uh, trio at a zero high safety, again, for us it's just strictly uh, best matchup. We're looking for the guy we have on our team we think that can beat the guy vertical uh, that they have on their team. Uh, depth, you know, personnel is my number one thing there. Every, going to every game, who do we think our mismatch is? That's one thing we want to look for. And then from there, the quarterback might look at depth. You know, our mismatch guy, because he's a mismatch, this corner may be playing way off. And while I've told him in the game, well, we kind of here because we got a better player. They're playing so deep that we may have to go to one of these two other guys just because that that uh, defender's not playing quite as deep against him. Doug, do we have anything on the, on the trio Daytona? Yeah, we got a couple of things, so I'll go backwards. Yeah, the, yeah we do have a couple of things, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go backwards here. So we've got a couple. Let me see here. So one coach has asked if you could just go over some of your landmarks that you're using for the receivers, where they're lining up on hash and on boundary. Alignment, generally, um, if it's trio, we're on the bottom of the numbers when we're into the boundary. Um, that's pretty consistent for us. That bottom of the numbers into the boundary, top of the numbers when we're to the field. Okay, usually two yards inside the hash, two to actually two to four yards inside the hash for the Y, and and usually two yards outside the hash for the F um, when we're in a trio situation. Um, and we'll adapt these guys a little bit based on route, uh, based on what we're trying to do, like that Y. He's going to get a little bit wider if he's running a 95 because he wants to stretch that Mike linebacker. If he's got a far hash route, he may bring it in a little bit more. So they have some flexibility to play with it. Um, but our basic rule for the outside guys is you know, wide side, top of the numbers, boundary, bottom of the numbers. And, and then the Y is usually four to six yards inside the hash. And the F is usually about two yards outside the hash. Okay. The next one is, is um, I think they're asking for cut-ups. I'm not sure if you have. Is it, do you have any blitz cuts against cover zero, uh, for example, F and Y, converting to man beater and slant? So I'm not sure if you have it readily available. If not, we can always. Blitz cuts of man beater? Yeah. Give you the good ones. <laughs> I don't know if I have them all versus you know, what 
coverages. Here's our, here's what we call 99. So up here, you're going to get go and speed out. And down here, you're going to get one step slant and three step slant. So that's our, that's our 99 or our man beater concept. It makes a nice catch and run there. You know, as a coaching point, you know, after we, we watch film, we, we got on number three here um, because what he needs to do is he needs to get inside this defender right here. We want him you know, right there. I think this is versus too high, but we're telling him, I want you to get inside of that. It's a too high coverage. So that's the, that's the outside linebacker. If he works inside of him, that opens up that lane even more for our, uh, our second slant coming through. He okay. just makes a nice play and uh, he took that one to the house. That's great, Coach. That's great. Uh, here's another cut of 99. So we've got one step slant by this guy. We've got the three step slant here and we're throwing the, the fade speed out into the boundary. Uh, sorry, that's go. That was uh, the week before we had run uh, you know, the double slant about five times the week before. That was actually a, a touchdown you saw from the week prior to this. This is in a state championship game, and we had run 99 a few times, so we got him to bite. We got the corner to bite, and we, we got an easy one. Got it. Cool. So the next question is from Coach Venny. So what percentage would you say your guys would go deep on a win route versus break it off? Um, our guys would go deep on a win route. Um, I would say 40% of the, 50% of the time, it really depended on the coverages we were getting. Um, you know, we'd get some hard too, and, and we would go deep, but I know our guys, they were pretty smart about it. They didn't want to be covered. So they were, um, you know, they would, uh, they would, uh, sit down whenever that corner was playing off. I would say sometimes I actually had to get them to, to go deeper more than uh, more than not. Mm -hmm. Here's the we dropped this one, but one thing I, I mentioned to you, I talked to you about timing and quarterback drop, and this was our second string quarterback, but his his fundamentals were probably better than our first string guy. So this is dual Daytona, and we've got hard corners, so we see both corners are pressed and cover two. And both safeties are on the hash. And watch his footwork. One, two, three, ball is off. And uh, yeah, that was a that was a tough one. We were already up big, but um, again, to me, this was really good technique. One, two, three, punch, throw. He gets it right in that you know twenty-five yard range, and uh, and we're in good shape there. Mm -hmm. All right. Coach, what are your splits in trio when running Daytona? In trio, I think we just addressed that one, Coach. Oh, my my fault. I'm reading into this. Okay. All right. So, do you run quads? If so, what are your concepts? We are not a quads team. Didn't uh, didn't do it. Okay. It's a great it's a great concept. I'm coaching the All Star game right now, and and the guy I'm on the defensive side of the ball, and the guy we're coaching against uh, with run our offense, he's in quads, you know, one out of every four or five plays. Good stuff, but we, we it's just something we haven't gone to. Mm -hmm. um, did you teach your guys what the hard deck is? Yeah, we call the hard deck for us is six, six yards, okay? Um, defenders, the, the hard deck concept is basically um, – these outside areas of the field are called cushion tubes if you're a poor guy. Um, so it's based on the corner's cushion. Um, a hard deck for us is six yards. So if we think the receiver is under, or the, excuse me, the defender is under the hard deck at six yards, okay, that's a situation where we want to we take advantage of that vertical space right there. So right now this coverage has five guys under the hard deck and two safeties that are going to drop, uh, that are dropping deep. So 
again, R4 guys would call these outside areas cushion tubes. The inside areas are the collision tubes where you're very likely, if you're trying to get vertical, to be collisioned by an outside linebacker. And um, so you have two outside or cushion tubes, two inside or collision tubes. And the R4 guys call it a, a crossover tube. We call it the middle tube, that area in the middle of the field. So in a cover two zone right now, the guy who is responsible for this outside or cushion tube, he's below the hard deck. He's less than six yards. Um, we've got a defender here who's going to end up all right, above the hard deck in this collision tube. And I think there's another safety over here all right, in that collision tube. So here's an example of Daytona against a good football player and a good football team, number one team in the state of New Jersey. This young man, I think, is headed off to Purdue. So uh, we're trying to run Daytona, and he does a pretty good job of holding up our guy right there. Beats the snot out of him. Um, the inside guy, again, they do a nice job on our F, who's trying to get vertical. And he gets collisioned. What I don't like there is he's sitting way too early. He's got to clear. He's got to clear the underneath coverage before he can hash sit. So that safety bail. There's a safety here. So he's thinking I'm going to sit, but we're going to try to clear that guy there, or at least not make our break that early. Our quarterback just happened to be a real good scrambler, real good improviser here. So he sees an escape lane and goes to it. You could have dumped the ball off for his tail to his tailback for some positive yards, but we uh, we end up getting loose late and dropping one in. Any other Daytona questions, Coach? That's all I have for the moment. Take a couple more quick cuts. This is one we had Zorro called out of this, and we kind of checked it from the sideline. I'm not sure everybody got the check. I don't even think the quarterback got the check. Um, tailback got it. He stepped up and protected. You know, zero coverage. Um, we like to, if we weren't checking the 99, we were checking the Daytona um, against zero coverage. So here they're bringing pressure. There's no safeties. Everybody's below the hard deck, so we're trying to beat, beat our guys vertical. It's the best matchup, and we're able to get one in. Here's another one off a of scramble. Talk about the, the outside guys with their win routes and making the decision. So here you have... Clearly off corners. Both of our outside win routes. He's making his decision. He knows where he's going to go. He bails out. All right, the guy at the top of the screen. Let's see what he does. And he bails on it too. So we've got both of these outside receivers. They knew they had deep corners. Um, here's our inside hash route. Quarterback stepped out of the pocket. He gets the ball in that 22 yard area in that window right there on the play. Do you run any switch or flip adjustments? We practiced them a little bit but didn't feel like uh, didn't feel like we needed them. Um, they're, they're good adjustments but we were not switching those guys. Um, we, we just ran straight verticals for the most part. We ran a little Daytona switch out of uh, green and blue. Uh, that was nice to us, but we did not uh, we did not run run a lot of straight switch routes out of two and two, four out of three and one. Okay, and uh, any changing routes? Mm. Not sure what they're referring to. Right, we have uh, we have trio Daytona, and we would run a little X shack off of that. Um, let me see if I have that in the, in the slides. I didn't put that in these slides, but you can take you know, a nice little adjustment. You can run Trio, Daytona, and then run X on a shack route. And this is uh, excellent versus zero, but also real nice versus too high if that, you know, if that Mike linebacker 
That Mike linebacker is running the hole. This is a real nice. Now Mike linebacker is running out of here. You bring X on a shallow on Daytona. You, Sam's gotten some depth to get under that. You've got your X shack here. And we tell our tailback whenever it's X shack, he's got a bullet route, so he's going to take it up the sideline like so. That's one of the one of the few change ups that we ran off of, off of Daytona. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, throwback shoulders? We didn't. We didn't. Uh, we'll throw back shoulder in the red zone, goal line situation, but uh, at, at our, in our level, we just have, didn't have the practice time that I felt to, to do a lot of that out in the middle of the field. Uh, and we probably run too many concepts to get really good at throwing the back shoulder fade. We do like it. You know, down in the red zone, uh, down in the goal line area, but not something that we've done in the middle of the field. I'm going to jump to another route that we, we think fits, and that's our caddy route. We put it in off a duel, so we tell our quarterback on caddy, X has the take two post, which for us means it's a fade versus any press corner. It's a post versus any off corner where we have two guys on about the same level. So in one high look, you usually have a corner and safety at the same level. If it were if it were cover four where the corner was off, the corner was off here and the safety is off here, we would run the post in both of those situations. So here's our take two post by the X. Our F's got a grab route, all right, just like you would on Dagger. He gets to five yards and looks at the quarterback. When the quarterback brings his eyes his way, he reverts back to the sideline. Uh, y has his cross under Sam, over Mike, running for a point about 18 yards deep on the far hash and looking for an area down. All right, it's not a full speed route unless he gets linebackers running with him hard and matching up. We'd be looking to settle in the spaces or the holes in the zone uh, when we're running our Y cross. If the linebacker marries us and matches up with us, then we'd like to run away from, run away from him and beat him with speed. But if we're zo linebackers are zoning off, you want to control your speed in those windows because that's where the quarterback is looking to get you the ball. The Z on the backside has a post curl. Okay, great post at 10. Right at about 14, come in, break curl, find the open window, all right, and our tailback has a check flat. Now, this is our slide from last year. I talked to a couple guys about this going forward this year. We're probably going to run key with the F and swing with the tailback, and I think that's more what, uh, what Coach Mazzoni was, was doing over at uh, UCLA. Um, that's where I think those, those routes are coming from. I know he runs swing with the tailback. Not sure if he's running grab or key with the F. We're going to look at it with key by the F this season to try to get that guy out of there. We, we threw so much key last year that I really think those outside linebackers are going to be jumping that. So our, for our quarterback, it's one, two, three. Row the take two post when your back foot hits the ground. If you've got a soft corner and a safety get in depth, you're coming off that take two post. It's not there. All right, we're going to hitch up, and we're going to try to find the window to that Y on his cross route. Now, what we tell him is we're going to defender key off the cross. All right, if the outside linebacker is the guy that's preventing you from throwing that because he's settling in deep, doesn't happen too often, you're going to come down to the grab here if you don't like the cross. More often than not, you're not going to throw the cross because that Mike linebacker is getting involved with him, is married up on him, is, is closing that zone. So if that mic is running with him, then we're going to come back here, okay, and hit that take two post, excuse me, curl out on this side. So if you're thinking progressions, right, our quarterback is told it's one to two, okay. That's our rhythm route. We want to throw it on rhythm. That's our read, our first pitch. And now three could be the grab, or three could be the post curl, based on how that cross route is being covered. Front side, Mike runs with it, okay, across the field. 
Now we're stretching the sand with the post curl, and again, for round curl this year, it'll probably be a swing wrap. Right? This will is getting involved. This, this outside backer is getting involved on the cross. Now we're going to look to come out here to the grab wrap. So it's rhythm route is to take two posts. The read route is the cross. And then the, the third progression, the rush route, is going to be based on how the cross is getting covered. If we see a too high look, so now we've got some type of a hard corner. Well, now we're going to convert that route to a fade on the outside. The take two post becomes our fade route, and that is our rhythm route. One, two, three, throw that fade or go route down the sideline. What stops him from throwing that? Tough collision by the corner, or this safety getting depth and, and taking that away from us. We come off the rhythm route, which is our fade, to our read route. Now, if they're in too high safety look, you got a little more space between the backers. Okay, If we beat the mic over the top, we're going to throw it right in that hole right there. All right, Who can take that away once we beat the mic? This will linebacker. If the will is playing our eyes and looking inside, we can come down to this grab. Or more likely, that mic matches up with it, runs underneath it. Now our quarterback comes back here to his post curl swing route combination, trying to find find a lane either inside, usually inside that sand, but but could be outside that sand, but more often than not, it's to the inside. And then versus zero high, again we're probably on this route throwing the rhythm fade route. One, two, three, get it to your deep route. You've got good pressure there. We should be able to beat this guy. Um, we don't have a lot of time. The R4 guys would say you go right from your rhythm to your rush route. Uh, we, we don't know if there's a true rush route on this, but we kind of would consider that to be the grab. So one, two, three. You don't like that for fade for whatever reason. Come down to this grab route. Who's going to try to get away to the outside of that? Excuse me. Get away to the outside. He's going to get the five. When the quarterback looks at him, he's going to sprint flat and away. So we can throw it to that grab. If it's that key screen, don't really like the key screen as a man beater. All right? I would probably tell our guy, hey, we're going to just take our shot here. All right. Possibility of hitching up to the cross um, if we like that one-on-one -on -one matchup. But he's got to know it's got to come out pretty quick because we've got we've got one-on-one -on -one all the way across the front. Hey coach, can you um can you re-explain the the wise release and why he's looking for or what he's looking for in the defense? Yep. Why is going to try to come underneath that Sam and then get over the top of the mic? If the Sam is really apex and tight on us and he doesn't you know he doesn't think that's the way to go, that guy's really in there. He can get over the top of the Sam. Okay. He's looking for the first window from the center away from him. We're never going to settle before the mic. We're always going to look to get over the top of the mic. So now, once he gets over the top of the mic linebacker, if he's got space between the backers, he's going to idle down in that space. All right, He's going to slow himself down, okay? run under control, and try to get the ball right in that space between the two linebackers. If that Mike linebacker is walling him, running with him, he's got to get over the top of the mic. He's got to clear that. Again, he's looking for space in the middle. If he feels like the space is going to be on the other side of the will linebacker, he's going to accelerate his run and get to this side of the will linebacker. Depends on how that will is dropping. He's getting a great deal of depth. All right, we have a few teams that, that really try to hump these guys out there to the curl. He might be able to get the ball in the middle. If their drops are a little bit more straight back, sorry, a little bit more straight back, then he's going to look for this window between those two linebackers on his cross route. When he's running it against the single middle linebacker defense, again, we're going to look for the first window on the other side of the mic. So based on Sam, where Sam is, if Sam's head up or, or close to shading us, we're going to get inside the Sam. We, 
We'd rather not go around the top, so we'd like to get inside the sand so we can get across the field. If we, um, you know, if at all possible, we want to get under Sam unless he really refuses to let that happen, and then we'll flip over the top. We get under Sam, we climb with depth on the mic, and again, we think there's a potential window right here against the too high safety look. All right, once you get over the mic, we're expecting that will to get some width on our grab route. That's really the open hole we're looking for him to, to control his speed in so that he can catch the ball where the quarterback throws it. Does that do it, Doug? That does it. I do have one question, Mike, if any. I'm going to mess this one up, too. I'm trying to – it's got some abbreviation. It says, did you feel the hash – I'm trying to get this right – SLT replaces Honda? The slot? The hash sit replaces Honda? Sit. Maybe it's sit. Oh, sit. He did. He put it – he corrected. It's sit. I think the hash sit replaces Honda. Um, not really. We have another concept. I, I was hoping to you know, I'll give you one more concept that we spend a lot of time with um, that, that really replaced Honda for us that was very good. Um, you know, it's, it's a holdover from our days as a West Coast offense. Uh, it's the one we use to replace Honda. And we'll finish up with Caddy, and I'll, I'll give you that one real, real quick because that was a great route for us. Um, Caddy's a route that – we spent some time with last year. We didn't run it as much as I thought we would. Uh, this year, our tight end is at be six foot five, uh, you know, four seven, and two hundred thirty pounds. So we're looking forward to really spending a lot of time with the caddy route this year because we think it, it fits our personnel uh, very well. We can run it out of dual. Uh, when we go to trio, the routes don't change at all. Now you've just put the tailback to the side that the Y is running his cross to and you put the F away. So again, our um, our adjustment this year is probably going to be swing because um, it ties in better with all the Exxon that we run, okay, and probably key two out here because those are two things that we're doing a lot of. So we want to give these outside linebackers the key two look and the swing look. Um, we didn't do it last year because – this is kind of a holdover from what we had been, been doing in the past, but I, I think swing and key two are going to really complement this route very well. And um, again, right now the Y is looking to get over the top of the mic. There's a potential window here and another potential window here over the fill. Um, we expect to catch the ball a lot more in this window right here between the linebacker that's in the middle of the field and the outside linebacker. We run a swing. I think we're going to get some width by that outside backer. Now all our Y has to do is get over the top of that. You know, we're calling the will here because it's a, a four linebacker defense that's that's walked to the trio. Um, but this inside middle linebacker get over the top of him, and we think we have a great window there. The quarterback progression is still one, two, three. You know, who's the guy that can give you a problem if you're having success with your Y? This free safety wants to jump that route. You know, you've got to be looking here first, okay, because and this is where our quarterback in last year struggled a little bit. You know, he would get off this way too soon and be ready to throw the cross too early. He hadn't given it a time to develop. So a nice deep three-step drop with your eyes on that take two post. If it's not open, because the free safety got depth. That's really what we want him to do. We'll take the home run if they'll give it to us, but free safety gets depth. Now we're going to hitch up with our quarterback. Really, that's the window that we're looking to throw the ball. Uh, generally, when we, we're running this out of trio, we tell them to think weak because now they've kind of adjusted here. Um, you know, he can jump that, and if that mic's going to be a pro player, we don't know if that's quite as good. So we want to think weak in trio. Versus too high, it's the same concept. Okay, now the X has the fade route. That's your first look. Hopefully you've gotten this safety off the hash and gotten depth. That's why you didn't throw the fade. And we'll run swing now, and we're really hanging up this Will linebacker. If he gets width, there's your, your hole to the Y cross right there. Um, one, two, three. Throw the fade if it's there. If it's not, come down to the cross. Right. Who's covering the cross? Did the Mike linebacker run with it? If so, we're coming backside. 
If it's this will linebacker getting depth here, then we're going to look to throw our swing back. And again, against zero coverage, it's best look. All right. Generally for us, that's almost always going to be the fade. Um, we wouldn't, and this is an old slide, I'd never tell him to come back here and throw this grab as the rush route. We're going to tell him one, two, three, throw the fade ball. If you don't like it, you either get it to the cross or you get it, you know, you throw the fade um, in that situation in zero. Got it. So, Coach, on are you set? Can I move on? Um, unless you have any other caddy questions. Uh, it's only caddy question. I got one right now. Well, here we go. So, Coach, on grab route, is the F waiting for the quarterback to look at him like in yes. Chevron? Okay. Yep. It's the same grab concept. And again, we try to use – we like to be as consistent as possible so the kids don't have to, to learn a lot of different things. You know, the grab on Chevron is the same as the grab on caddy. And, and now it's you – know, they get comfortable with that. So we, we're trying to keep those as consistent as possible. Okay. That's all That's all the questions I have right now. Great. Um, the last one, I guess that was Mike's question about uh, the Honda. Um, mm -hmm. He didn't run a Honda. Actually, I'm version of it. So. Just give me a second here, Coach. I've got to get some stuff out of the way. Right. This is our Jayhawk concept, uh, and this is what we replaced Honda with uh, because it's a concept we, we carried over from our West Coast. Um, I have, was fortunate enough to, to play for an offensive coordinator back in 1985 uh, who spent some, a lot of time with Bill Walsh when, when he was with the Bengals and, uh, and kind of was first developing the West Coast offense. So. Um, my college coach at Montclair State, Charlie Kokoza, uh, came back with this concept in, you know, must have been 1985 from the Bengals uh, that he had gotten from, from Bill Walsh and, and the staff over there. And, and it's, a, a, it's basically our, our middle open, middle closed read. So what we do with the Y is we tell him his, his depth is at eight yards, okay, and he's going to get over the ball at eight yards. We want to get under the mic linebacker if at all possible. Right? We think that's important to try to get under the mic. So it could be six yards, it could be eight, but you're going to get under or between the two backers versus a one high safety, and you're going to sit right there over the football. And why this is called a middle option route for him. So he sees that the middle is closed by a free safety, so he gets over the ball, all right, six to eight yards. Middle is closed. All right. Our outside receivers have what we call a Jayhawk option. And for them, a Jayhawk option means if I have any off corner per deck and a backpedaling corner, I'm going to get inside leverage and run my curl route. All right. Get to 12 yards, put your foot in the ground, and come back to the quarterback. My T is going to run a swing. Last year we had him run a flat route. My F is going to run key two. Last year we had him on a speed out, all right? So what we're basically trying to do against any one high look, all right, especially cover three, which I, we feel this is very good against zone teams, okay? We're going to put five underneath routes, all right, a middle option, two curls, you know, Jayhawk options, a swing, and a key. We're going to put five underneath against their four underneath guys. So the quarterback is one, two, three. Throw the middle option to the Y. Okay? Why aren't you, why don't you throw it to the Y? What's going to stop you? Well, we, for us, this is a defender key. Generally, it's the Mike linebacker who covers that op middle option route. So if the Mike covers the middle option, you're going to go to the coverage side. All right? So now you're going to hitch up and you're going to throw this curl route in your progression. Who's going to cover the curl route? All right, that outside linebacker, all right? Two routes covered by the outside linebacker, hitch up and throw the tailback swing, okay? We didn't see a ton of cover three teams. I mean, this is, you know, this is as basic as football gets, in my opinion. Um, I haven't been a West Coast guy for a long time. 
One, two, three. Throw the ball between the two inside linebackers. Okay, quarterback, wherever the coverage comes from. The flat to that side. So if the mic covers it, curl to swing. If the will were to cover the middle option route, curl to key. Again, we throw a ton of key. I can't imagine that guy's not going to vacate on the key and we'll have a nice open lane there. All right, so for us, it's a middle option is our rhythm. Read route is our curl off the defender key. And then our rush route is either the key or the swing. Now, we saw a lot more too high safety look. Okay, so now the Y in his middle option sees that the, if we're going to talk R4, the collision, to, uh, excuse me, the, the crossover tube, or at Ramapo we call it the middle tube, but I see the middle of the field is wide open. Avoid the jam by the Sam linebacker, okay, get his hands off you, and then get down the middle of the field, run this thing right between the goalposts, right, right for that middle post, that's where we want you to be. Our T and our F are consistent, always run and swing and grab. Now our Jayhawk option route on the outside, right, we tell the guys if you've got a corner that's hard and outside, right, we're almost going to make this look like a snag route. One step up the field, three steps in like a snag, and then push it vertical to 10 to 12 yards and break to the deep corner. One step, make it look like snag. You're three steps inside, vertical to 10 to 12 yards, and push 25 yards deep on the sideline is usually the, the angle we tell them to try, to try to get to. Okay? So now your quarterback comes out, one, two, three, throw that middle option to Y. He clears the linebackers, get them the ball early, all right, in that 15 to 20 yard range, all right, let him catch and run down the middle. What's going to happen is that free safety, if it's covered two, will probably jump that Y. He's going to take that away from us, and now we have a high-low on this corner here. Okay? The quarterback is taught this is a defender key for us. We know that anytime we have defender keys, we go to the side that the coverage comes from. So in this case, this safety is covering the Y. We have the high-low on the corner here um, on our Jayhawk option. And that one's been, been pretty good for us. Down at the bottom, we have think strong unless safeties roll that way. So this could roll to it could roll to a to a one high look. Um, but the reason we want to think strong is when we get a quarters team. So now I, I don't have quarters on a separate slide, but if I've got a soft corner here instead of a hard corner, well, against soft corner. Our outside receivers know that for us, a Jayhawk option route means soft corner equals curl. So now I'm going to use my curl route instead of my option because the corner is soft. Well, if it's quarters, that, that safety has the Y on the vertical. So the safety is going to eat him up. All right, this outside linebacker usually has first threat to the flat, so he'll probably jump that swing route, and that opens up our window to the curl. We try to get that before that Mike linebacker can get there. All right? So we've coached our quarterbacks that um, think strong on this unless the safeties roll that way. Generally for us, we're coming here. So the guys get trickier and trickier. If they know what we're doing and they start to roll the safeties, maybe they're going to roll this coverage to three on the move, something like that. Okay? So now our quarterback is one, two, three. Um, boy, my, my Y beat the, you know, we beat that safety to the middle option route. But, oh, the far safety is coming across. Uh, our kids aren't good enough to convert that or change that. We're not going to see that. But hopefully the quarterback does. If, you know, we're working on teams that roll safeties. All right, we're going to coach him that, hey, if that safety rolls, well, what's the rule? You go to where the coverage came from. So this safety rolled on the Y, took took that away, this corner probably bailed. So what do we have here? We have a curl route coming on this side. So now we've hung up that outside linebacker. If he runs to key two, we throw the curl. If he runs to the curl, we throw the key two route. Okay? So everything's based off who is covering why for us. It's a defender 
key. He's going to throw the middle option route on rhythm, and then either the high-low if the corner's hard, or the curl flat if the corner is soft. All right, the other option would be no safety look. Now, again, we, you know, we do some coaching on these outside guys. Our outside guys know that corner is off. I want to run my curl. Corner is hard and outside. I'm going to run my J. We call this a Florida route from, from what we used to use. But uh, now he's going to run this route here. The corner is up and outside. It's our Florida. Um, that guy is up and tight. If the corner is up and inside, and this is what I would tell how I coach it with our guys. Is the Florida a good route? No, oh, coach, he's going you know, to jam the hell out of me. What would be a good route versus press man? Well, I want to run a fade, coach. Oh, go run a fade. Um, so now, so now we've got zero coverage, no safeties. We're going to convert this thing to vertical routes. Y still has the middle option. He's going to take the middle vertical. The Jayhawk options on the outside convert to fades. Our tailback's probably going to be in in protection, and we've got the key by the F. Pick your best vertical matchup. All right, so that's our Jayhawk combination. We can run it out of dual. We can run it out of trio. Okay. Good boundary route versus trio. If you're getting a one high look, you know, without going over the progression, it doesn't change. You're throwing the Y on the middle option. If there's a one high safety throw away from coverage, but we do we do tell him to think boundary a lot on this because now in that trips look, this mic is going to be offset. If it's one high, we feel the mic is generally going to apex us out here. So who get under and inside the Y, excuse me, the mic, who's going to be the real factor on that? Usually it's this middle linebacker or the will. So we tell him think boundary because the will is probably going to be the guy that covers that because the mic's got to get to this hook. And now we've hung up this boundary outside linebacker with a curl swing combination. One, two, three, throw the rhythm middle. If it's not there, right, we've told him in trio, think boundary, we're going to go curl to swing. Too high look. Middle is open. Okay, that crossover tube for the R4 guys. All right, Y is down the crossover tube. One, two, three. As soon as he passes that um, Mike linebacker, get him the football. All right. Generally, when we've got trips out here, Y is going to be able to beat that safety inside. We want to get the ball to the Y in the middle. Whenever we're running trio to the field, we often tell him to think boundary. We're going to run away from that field safety. It's really this boundary safety, just like in Daytona, the boundary safety that we're trying to work on here. Um, but this is usually a pretty good look to the Y for us. In all honesty, this concept to the field is, is too far away from our quarterback, for our quarterbacks to really throw very effectively. So we'll generally tell him to think boundary here to here to here. And again, up by us, what do we see a lot of, all right, versus our trio, we see roll safeties, possibly manned up corner on this backside. So he may man up, in which case we may have a boundary fade route and we have our swing. Zero high, hey, the outside guys versus press, they want to run their verticals, and the Y takes it down the middle. So. At Ramapo High School, this because we've had a West Coast background, this has kind of been our substitute for Honda. Um, I think you need to have one or the other. Uh, this is what we like, but you know, if you're not going to run the West Coast concept, certainly you know Noel's Honda concept. We, we think you have to have a curl route uh, for teams that want to play one high coverage. Doug, do we, we have any questions? No, coach. I think you're uh, they're dazed and confused and amazed all at the same time right now. No, 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 no questions right now. I think they're all a little bit dazed, confused, and amazed all at the same time. <laughs> so, no, no. I'm sure there's someone will, some more will jump in here in a minute, but you 
got to rep it, but if you rep it, it, it is learnable for, for the kids. And, uh, you know, if you start in June, you know, it, it, it takes some time, but these are, these are things our kids have experienced over the years. So for us, this was a, you know, this was a continuation of something we've been running for, you know, ever since our kids got in the program. Um, so it was easy for us to adapt it to the end zone principles. Awesome. Well, that was great stuff, Coach. Is that is that the end of the presentation you have right now? That's that's all I had for tonight. Awesome, don't. <laughs> it's amazing. So the next one is Coach Boyd says. Just want to confirm that all the route conversions are pre-snap decisions. Is that correct? Well, I would say the middle option for us generally is a pre-snap decision. Depends on who we're playing and what they're doing on the outside. Um, you know, if we got a team that's given us a lot of up and back with the corners, um, we may read that on the fly. We may make some adjustments on the fly. Um, to simplify, we have against the cover two look what we have done against some teams. Um, if they're really playing a lot of games with these corners, we'll tell them just curl or fade. We've, we've simplified that. This. Florida route takes a lot of practice um, you, to get good at. Sometimes we're, some years we're real good at it, some years we're not. Um, last year we weren't as good at the Florida route as we've been in past years because we were doing different things. Late in the season we told them, hey, we're just going to, we're either just going to run curl or fade. So we've, we've made that adjustment on the outside. And that's a lot easier one to do when they're up, or up and backing your, you know, your outside wide receivers. You know, corners are lining up and press and bailing and doing some of those things. So um, depends on your talent, um, depends on, on how your kids do it. Um, I would even say this middle option guy, you know, as we're running the middle option route, you know, if this safety comes over hard and, and I don't think I'm open, well, we, we told our guys, well, bend it underneath it. You know, find a way to get open. So um, we do adjust a little bit on the fly. Um, and, again, that depends on our talent experience of our players. You know, if I've got four senior receivers, um, we're going to be able to do more, uh, you know, more adjustments on, on the fly post-snap. Um, if I've got, you know, three or four sophomores playing out there, you know, then, then we're going to be very pre-snap. So I think it really depends on, on who we've got playing there and their experience level. Got it. Got it. Do you still run the mesh or Mercedes concept? We do not. We do not, and we see, I think we see more zone than man, um, which is why we gave up on Mercedes, or didn't even, Mercedes. We, we had a version of mesh in our old offense, um, just too time intensive. Um, you know, I would probably, if I was running mesh, I wouldn't be running, I might not be running Jayhawk, um, or I'm, you know, I might have to give up something else. So uh, for us, hey, we're Chevron, we're Exxon, we're Daytona, uh, Caddy Jayhawk, those are probably our, our most called concepts. A little bit of dodge. Got it. Got it. My left F shack out. You gotta have you know, we're we're F shack instead of mesh. We you know, Shack is our, our man, you know, along with ninety nine, Shack is our man beat. Mm hmm So uh, Mike Venning's back in. What what are so are these your primary three drop back passes? And if so, what are the next passes you run? Um these three, along with Shaq, Chevron, Exxon, those are. You know, we probably have too many concepts, to be perfectly honest. We, you know, we have a lot of drop back concepts, but um, it starts with Chevron and Exxon. We get Daytona in. Jayhawk, Caddy go in. F, uh, F Shaq goes in before Jayhawk and Caddy, but then we go to Jayhawk and Caddy, um, and then. Probably chair would be the next concept we get to, and as I said, that that's a lot of passing game. If, if there's something I got to get better at, is you know, we got to we got we probably got to look at cutting a little bit of that out. Mm -hmm. Dodge would be the next next one that comes in. We just like to throw the ball so much, and uh, fortunately, you know, we've got some pretty pretty bright kids that can handle it. Okay. Hey, Coach, could, well, could you throw up a slide on, on the um, 
on either on nine on that ninety nine and just run through with how you how you would run that. We have a couple of questions for you to diagram that one as well. Okay, so for us, 99 is double slant to the Y side and go speed out to the F side. And that's how we run it. Um, you know, I, I listened to Noel earlier say, I think he gives his quarterback some freedom to, to choose which side to put the double slant to, which side to put the, uh, you know, I think it's his 93 concept is the speed out go uh, concept. And he might let his quarterback choose. For us, you know, I'm going to put this one on me. I'm, I'm going to figure out where I want the, the route. So it will always be double slant to the Y side and speed out and go to the F side. Now, the one thing we tell our Y is you know, we want him getting inside the apex defender or the, the man on him. So it's one step hard and, and get inside that. And as soon as you get inside that guy, push vertical. Uh, we, you know. That's what we believe in. One step, get inside the Sam. As soon as you get inside, get vertical, get away from these bad guys. We don't want to let that guy come in here and either pick the ball off or decapitate you. So that's our, that's our we call that an inside seam route. All right? Our outside guy is running a three-step slant. And uh, we used to be a more up-the-field slant in, in working with Noel last summer. Um, we're now a three-step and, and flatter type slant situation there. Generally, we're not going to throw double slant much if it's cover three zone. We might throw it against cover one. We might throw it against man with post safety, but we'll barely ever throw it versus cover three zone there because the mic gets with, the Sam gets with, and, and just too many bad things happen. So um, if it's a team that's playing cover three, I'm going to tell my guy, you know, we're, we're not going. We, we generally want to go to this side. Um, cover three, you're probably going to get an apex outside linebacker, okay? So the X has got the go route, and, and basically this is our money ball. We, we throw the heck out of this. Uh, our F caught 70 passes last year, and, and a lot of them were between key two and, uh, and a speed out situation. So one, two, three. Yeah. Not a three-step drop. It's a catch and throw because uh, it's a quick game. So he's going to catch, punch, and deliver the ball to the F. If it's a cover three look, if it's man-to-man, -man, then we have a better chance of possibly coming over here. But uh, we'll base that on his leverage. If he's hard outside leverage, excuse me, if it's a one-high look and he's hard outside leverage, or we might tell the quarterback to come over this side. The one thing I always tell my quarterbacks on 99, we are going to pick a side pre-snap. Whichever side you pick, you're going to stay there. We never go from right to left or from left to right on 99. You either say, you know, hey, pre-snap, I made a decision it was double slant. All right, inside seam, slant, throw it out of bounds over his head. Okay, coach, I, I decided I was going to go to the, you know, the go and the speed out. Okay. I looked at the speed out. I looked at the go. Didn't like anyone overthrow the go out out of bounds. But we'll, we'll run the football. You're going to pick a side, and it's a it's a one-two progression. Okay. Nice. Versus cover two. This is where we really love double slant. We're going to coach our guy to get inside the outside linebacker and push vertical right away. Again, these guys generally want to try to get a jam. So what hap What we find out that happens against some teams. Is this Sam linebacker is really going to work to jam that, and that's going to open up that second outside slant. So it's you know it's catch punch. Look at this inside seam. The Sam's going to collision it. Throw that slant. So we make a lot of a lot of money again on cover two against this. If the Sam vacates, then as soon as the Y gets inside him, we're going to get vertical and, and try to catch the ball away from the mic, but underneath that safety. If that's to the field, the quarterback will often he may pick that, or we put this speed out and go combination into the boundary. We tell the X to force the outside release here. This is one where you're going to start outside and you're going to stay outside. He doesn't of if the corner gets width of coming back under underneath. This is a 
I've, I've seen it written as an FOR, forced outside release. Okay, he's got to get to the outside. He's got to get that corner turn. All right, we're going to get him up the field. If he gets killed and doesn't get any depth at all, at least what we've done is we've opened up a nice window between the outside linebacker and the corner. All right, quarterback, if you feel that there's a corner still out there, right, don't lead him into pressure. Throw it at his backside here. Let him catch the ball. And at least we've gotten, you know, for us this is a big third and five type route, so we've gotten our, you know, we've gotten our first down there. If the corner sits, we're going to go in behind him on the go route. Generally, you know, if we get this corner's back to you, his back is to you, it's turned. All right, we're going to throw the speed out. If his eyes are on you, quarterback, then we're probably going to beat him outside. We'll throw the fade. So that's the coaching point we use for our quarterback versus a hard corner. His back is to you, throw the speed out. If his eyes are on you and he's looking at you, try to get the ball in front of you. Anything else, Doug? Yep. So then I've got two questions here. We're starting to get into them. I'm married to two of them. So uh, can, you, can you briefly explain why you're not utilizing Honda and why you are running Jayhawk instead and a little detail on Jayhawk? Well, I guess I, I, like, I like our Jayhawk combination because it gives, us, um, it gives us something good versus too high or one high. And I look at Honda as a, and it just may, may just be the way I interpret the, the route, but the way we feel um, is that if we're running against a too high look and we're running our Y in the middle, sorry guys, and we're running the Y in the middle on Honda, and we're running the curl route, we're running the curl route here, okay, we feel like, well, Corners can come up and take our two, you know, our key and our swing away. We feel that the Sam linebacker and the Will linebacker should be able to cover the curl routes. Right? We feel that Mike linebacker should be able to match up inside route on Honda. So we kind of feel like, um, you know, if you're running that curl combination, it's pretty well defended um, against against a two deep zone look. I think Noel runs on his Honda. He's got uh, the F run and the wheel route. Well, you know that corner would probably match up with that wheel over the top. And again, the wheel's still in position to cover the curl. The Mike's still in position to match up with the Y. And Sam covers the curl. And he covers the swing. We just feel like we, we don't have a real advantage there. Um, we really like the idea of against this too deep look. You know, being able to get the Y down the middle. If you think about how we run Daytona, on both of these, we're not running a bender. So Jayhawk kind of gives us our down the middle route versus a too deep look. Um, and, and again, I think part of its comfort, um, because we were a West Coast passing attack, this was a staple of our offense beforehand. We, you know, we see how it, it's very similar to Honda. Um, we just felt like we'd get more for the money uh, on this route. We have more options as far as uh, what to do with the football. Honda's a great concept. You still have, hey, you still have curls. You know, again, if you're running Honda against this, you know, maybe your, you know, your Y against their mic. Your Y is pretty good, and even our Y against their Mike, you know, we should be able to beat him and find space. That's that's a lousy drawing. But on Honda, we should probably be able to beat him and find some space somewhere in the middle because he's isolated there. So uh, I, I think you know I think Honda's a simpler concept to teach your players, um, and, and it's an excellent you know, Honda's an excellent concept as well. Got it. Now you have more time to practice mesh because you're not worried about reading with your Y and reading with your outs. But again, that's more for our comfort level and what we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Well, Coach, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna call. I really appreciate it. You did a great job. Everybody's giving you tons of kudos on the backside. 
So we had about, I, th I think right now we're, we're at about 40 questions. Uh, Coach Aveni, he, he, he overstepped his boundaries and asked about 32 of those, <laughs> I think. So, Coach, you're tapped for the next month of eClinics. No, I'm teasing. No, it was great. Everybody's throwing it in right now. We really appreciate it, Coach. As always, your, your attention to detail pays off for your team, and actually it's paying off for the end zone clients as well because everybody is really, really appreciating it and eating it up. So I do thank you, and uh, I wish you well with uh, with practice and with the games coming up. So Awesome, and hopefully we'll see a lot of you guys down at uh, Widener and uh, 